Hello guys, it's been a long time since I've actually uh, uploaded a video. So today's video is a Cambridge IGCSE Information and Communication Technology paper. This is for Paper 1 Theory with the code 0417 12 of uh, February, March 2022 paper. And the paper is going to be for about two hours. So I know many of you guys have this paper coming up for exams. So hopefully this video has helped you all to understand these concepts much more better. And if you guys have enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. And uh, yeah, let's start the video. All right. Okay, so uh, I've noticed that many people have commented on my previous ICT videos. Just to point it out is um, some people have mentioned about the handwriting. So I'm really sorry about if the handwriting was a little off in some of the previous videos. So the new ICT videos are going to be with better improved handwriting. So it can help you guys to actually understand the concepts. So I'm really sorry about that. And uh, yeah. Okay. So the total mark for this paper is 100. It's going to be 100 marks. And yeah. Okay. So the first question is, you can see is that a tablet computer consists of both hardware and software. So we have to define the term hardware. So if you look at this, um, what is hardware? When we think about hardware is that it's anything that is physical. So we got to write this down is that it is the physical component or let's say the physical components of a computer system. That's something that we can write down for one mark if you guys want to score those points. So it is the physical components of a computer system. Okay. All right. So the next one is that we can see that there's one input device that's used on a tablet computer, which is a touch screen. Name two other input devices that is built into a tablet computer. So into a tablet computer, what can you see that you can identify that is kind of like an input device? We can see that there's a microphone. Like when we speak, like how I'm speaking right now, that's a microphone. We're inputting an analog signal. And the other one is cameras. So when you're recording yourself, Okay, that's one form of um, an input device. You can also mention sensors. You use sensors everywhere. So yeah, for two marks, it should be more than enough. Now, write down two examples of system software. So system software could be compilers. We can give that example. Or it could be, a let's say, an operating system, an OS system. So this could be an operating system. Hopefully that's better. Okay. You can also mention a linker, you can mention utilities, you can also mention a device driver, you can mention an interpreter. It really depends on what you guys choose. Second question uh, is the circling question. Circle two items that contain personal data. So, personal data. So what you have to identify here is a bank card, that's personal data. And you can see that there's a medical record that's also consisting of personal data in this case. All right, so the next question is an internal memory of a computer consists of both ROM and RAM, okay? Describe the terms ROM and RAM. So ROM, what does ROM mean? ROM means read-only memory. So that's the first thing I'm going to write that down is that it is a read-only memory. It's read-only memory. And on top of that, we have to mention some form of description for ROM. So meaning that it is a, oh, sorry about that, is that ROM is a non-volatile form of data. It's a non-volatile form of data. Form of data meaning we can say that's a non-form it's a non-volatile form of data, meaning that no data, meaning that no data is lost when the computer is switched off. When the computer is switched off when the computer is switched off okay you can also mention that it's let's say it's used to store the startup instructions um, of the computer itself ram now what does ram mean ram is is random not oh yeah ram is random access memory so ram is random access memory so meaning that it is a non volatile it Actually, it's a volatile form of data. It's the opposite form of ROM. So meaning it's going to be a volatile form of data. So meaning, right? So what that means is that data, it means that data is is lost when computer is switched off. 
when computer is switched off. Okay, so Rome is a non-volatile form of data, so meaning it's not lost, the data is not lost. Whereas a RAM is a volatile form of data, so meaning that the data is lost when the computer is switched off. All right, let's move on to the next question. Is that the more modern laptop computers, they use solid state drives, SSDs, rather than hard disk drives, HDDs. State three advantages of using SDDs rather than HDDs in a laptop computer. So, the first thing is the startup of the laptop is faster. So that's a process, or let's say one of the advantages of using an SDDs is that you can mention that the startup of the laptop is faster. Of the laptop is faster. Then you can say that the SDDs, yes, uh, not the SDDs, it's the SSDs, they consume less power. So you can mention that they consume less power. Okay. Then you can also mentioned that it makes the laptop more compact so meaning it makes it makes the laptop more compact you can also mention that it reduces the weight of the laptop as the SDD or sorry as the SSD is lighter SDD SSD pretty rhymes off so so you can mention that it reduces the weight of the laptop as the SSD is lighter. So you can mention that point for about for like the third mark. So you can add that in. Let's move on to the next question. Now the next question is tick. Tick the following question. Tick whether the following statements refer to control, measurement, or modeling systems. We have to only take one answer for each statement. So maintaining the growing conditions in a glass house. So that's more of a more of a control system. Aircraft flight simulation is more of a modeling situation. Monitoring the pollution in the river is more of a measurement scenario. Using what ifs is more of a modeling situation. All right. So the World Wide Web, WWW, is often mistaken for internet. Describe the, explain the differences between the WWW and the internet. So you can say that, um, the WWW is a collection of information pages. It's a collection of information pages. You can also mention that the um, WWW right, is a part of the internet. It's part of the internet. So you can mention that as well. You can say that the WWW is um, is accessed through the internet so it's accessed through the internet you can mention that as well through the internet you can also say that the internet is a global network of networks so you can mention that as well the internet is a global network of networks you can mention that you can also mention that the internet is an is an infrastructure so you can mention that it is the infrastructure so these are some of the points that you can add for about let's say four marks so you can mention the differences like few differences between the World Wide web and the internet so in this case yeah let's move on to the next question all right the web address for cambridge igcsc is that they've given us the web address now we describe the following parts of the web address https so this is more of a, you can mention that since it's four marks, it's divided into four parts. So you can mention that this is the hypertext. This is the hypertext transfer protocol secure. This is the hypertext transfer protocol secure, meaning that this is a set of rules or a protocol to transfer web pages securely. In Cambridge International, this is more of the domain name. This is the domain name. The .org is more of a um, the top level domain name. It's a more of a top level domain name, All right? And you could be mention you can mention that it's registered as an organization. And the slash igcsc is more of a folder. You can mention that this is the folder, right? In which the work in which the work is stored 
on Cambridge International Cambridge International's server. All right. Okay. Okay. So question number six is the global positioning systems GPS. They're used for many different applications. Now the question is asking us to describe how GPS is used by a smartphone to pinpoint its location. So now this question is using the concepts of GPS. So we have to know an understanding of how the GPS works. So the answers that you're going to be writing down for four marks is that you can write down is that the location of the smartphone can be somewhat calculated using a GPS software. So you have to mention that the GPS software, we're going to say that the GPS software can be used can be used to calculate the location of the smartphone. All right, can be used to calculate the location of the smartphone. All right. So that's one point that you can write down and then you can say that this satellite or let's say the signal is transmitted by the satellite. That's another point that you're going to write down is that the signal is transmitted is transmitted by a satellite. Then the next point you're going to write down is that the signal is sent continuously. So the signal is sent almost continuously. Continuously. All right. And the data is saved in the smartphone. Data is saved in the smartphone. Okay, now this is the is the answer that you should be writing down for four marks, approximately somewhat close to this. And some other uh, mentions that you can include in this question is that the coordinates of the smartphone, they're shown on the smartphone screen. Okay, so these are the points that you can mention that the GPS software is used to calculate the location of the smartphone. You can say that the signal is transmitted by the satellite. The signal is all sent almost continuously. And the coordinates of the smartphone are shown on the smartphone screen. Or you can mention that the data is saved in the smartphone. Let's move on to the next question. All right, so the next question is that give three other examples of the use of GPS. Now, you guys can use any examples you guys like. So uh, let's say GPS is used in um, real-time, let's say, aircraft position, right? You can mention that, real-time aircraft aircraft position. You can mention that it can either be ship or drone positions. Ships use also GPS. Then you can mention that it can be used for military Okay, that's another point that you can write down. Then you can mention that it's used for tracking delivery of stolen vehicles. You can mention some other points like that. Okay, tracking delivery slash. You can mention either stolen vehicles. You can mention that as well. Some other points that you can include here is that you can say plowing fields. You can use GPS in that case. You can use satellite navigation in a vehicle, for example, a car, right? You use GPS in cars to reach a destination where you just input the location where you want to go to. So these are some of the examples that you can write for three marks. Let's move on to the next question. Okay. So the next question is question number seven is that it's stating that Tavar School is presenting a concert for previous concerts and the booking of tickets was carried out manually using pen and paper. For this concert, they're going to be using an online booking system. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of Tavar School using an online booking system rather than a manual system. So the question is worth eight marks. So what you're going to do is you're going to write four points for the advantages and four points for the disadvantages. All right. So you're going to split it up into advantages and disadvantages. So in total, you should be having eight points, which should give you eight marks. So the first point that we're going to write down is for the advantages is that the advantages we can use is to prevent, let's say, double booking or to prevent overbooking or double overbooking. In this case, it can be to prevent double booking or overbooking. Now, you can mention that the bookings are made 24-7. I've seen this keyword being used, can be made 24-7. 24 times 7, you can just mention 24-7. The other advantages of using an online booking system than a manual system is that it's cheaper, right? So it's usually 
I can mention that it's usually cheaper. Usually cheaper as low as lower overheads are used, right? We can use high overheads in this case. And uh, booking staff can more easily see the seats that are available using an online booking system. So you can mention that point as well is that the booking staff, the booking staff can more easily see the seats, see the seats that are available, that are available. Okay. Now, what are some of the disadvantages here in the online booking system? Now, since it's cheaper in that case, there could be some disadvantages for using online booking system. It just represents that the expensive cost of purchasing the hardware in this case, that could be some of the disadvantages here that you guys can write down. You can write disadvantages or, by the way, in your, in your question paper, when you guys are answering this question, you can either split it like this or the best is just to mention that here are some of the advantages and then start writing down your points. You guys can do that as well. So you can say that requires requires a school to purchase to purchase expensive hardware. To purchase expensive hardware. You can mention that. And then you can mention that setting up. Setting up is more expensive. Setting up is more expensive. You can also mention that the maintenance, yeah, usually for these online booking systems, the maintenance is usually more expensive in this case. Maintenance of anything software related. So maintenance is more expensive. You can mention the cost here. All right. Then the next point that you can write down is that it's the Internet has to be there when you're doing online booking system. It doesn't work without the Internet. So the Internet access is needed is needed to run the booking cost sorry it's needed to run the booking system here in this case so the cost may increase the cost may be increased okay now these are some of the advantages and disadvantages of using an online booking system now some of the other additional advantages that you guys can write is that that the booking staff can see immediately if the concert is fully booked the other disadvantages are it's more reliant on hardware. So these are some additional points that you guys can write down for eight marks fully when discussing the advantages and disadvantages of using an online booking system rather than a manual system. Let's move on to the next question. Now the next question is to identify the most appropriate method of implementation of the new online booking system in this scenario. So some of the advantages or not advantages here appropriate method would be direct changeover that would be the best choice that you guys can use here all right direct changeover now the next question states that explain giving reasons why your answer to part b is the most appropriate method of implementation for the serial uh, for the scenario so now the reason why we use direct changeover is that the benefits are immediate so meaning that you get results quickly and uh, efficiently so that's something that you can write down for the first point. You can mention is that the benefits, yeah, the benefits, they are immediate, right? They're immediate. You can also mention that it is cheaper since one set of staff, right? One set of staff. One set of staff. Okay. Um, you can also mention that there are only one system in operation, so therefore data is not duplicated. So you can mention that as well. So it's that it's only one. Let me just reload the system again. That it's only one system. It's only one system in operation. You're right. So therefore, therefore data is not duplicated. Data is not duplicated. So these are some of the three points that can be writing down for this question. You can also mention that there's less chance of the new system being faulty as it is thoroughly tested. And that's another point that you guys can write down for three marks. Okay, so question number eight specifies to describe the advantages and disadvantages of using a smartphone rather than a laptop computer to access the internet. So now here are some of the advantages that I've written down is that you all know how smartphones work and how you use them. 
So smartphones can access internet in more places. So like when you use smartphones, you can access internet wherever you go in depending on the location you are at. Smartphones are more likely to retain the connection while they're on move. So you tend to use your smartphone, like let's say while calling and walking, the connection is still strong. So that's how you can mention one of the advantages of using a smartphone there. Then you can also mention that they can access the internet quickly as they're more likely to have the smartphone with them. That's another example that you can write down for the advantages. Since this question is for three, for about six marks, you're going to split this thing into a, into about three marks for the advantages and three marks for the disadvantages. Now, uh, some of the disadvantages mentioned here about the smartphone is that the websites displayed on the smartphone are not the full versions of the website. So if you notice that when you use your smartphone and when you try to look at a website, it seems to be blocked and cut off. Some of the information seems to be blocked or cut off. That's because due to the smaller screen size on the smartphone. Whereas if you use a laptop, you're more likely to see the full version of a website while you're reading it or browsing it. So that's why the next point is that browsing or reading on a website is more difficult on a smartphone is due to its smaller screen size. Okay? And the next part is that it's more difficult to type in or let's say navigate websites or emails due to the smaller on-screen keyboard is that when you try to type information in a smartphone in terms of websites it's a whole different story when you're doing it on a laptop and you can also mention uh, other disadvantages such as like as children can access the internet anywhere from anywhere it just leaves them more vulnerable to exploitations on the internet so it really depends for children children in this case so that's some of the disadvantages you can mention of using a smartphone. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is that the introdu introduction of computers into the workplace has affected a lot of job patterns. So explain what is meant by part-time working. So part-time working just means that it's working fewer hours. Working. Oh, let me just write that down properly. Working fewer hours. Fewer hours a week a week then full-time staff okay that's for two marks that you can write down then full-time staff explain what is meant by compressed hours working compressed hours working is that is that it just works the required hour works the required hours in a week in a week in a fewer number of days in a fewer number of days. Now these are keywords that you have to write down for about two marks for this question. Now the next question is that employees working in the office use computers for pro prolonged periods of time. Describe three items that an employee should be provided with to help reduce the problems related to prolonged use of computers. So um, this question is that it's for three marks. So the first thing that you can write down is that wrist rest you can use that ergonomic keyboards now this is a really really important keyword that you guys remember ergonomic okay get the spelling right ergonomic keywords not not keywords sorry ergonomic keywords sorry guys ergonomic keyboards i'm just going to say that again ergonomic keyboards this is something that you guys have to remember when answering questions like this then you can also mention ergonomic chairs you can also mention that now some other uh ergonomic chairs sorry ergonomic chairs you can also mention that foot rest ergonomic mouse that seems to be the most classic as well you can also mention that lcd or tft led anti-glare screens you can also mention voice activated software you can also mention adjustable monitors so these are some of the points that you guys can write down for three marks for this question let's move on to the next question the office must be a safe working environment state to physical safety issues that might exist from the introduction of computers so uh, some things to consider is that tripping over tripping tripping over trailing cables over trailing cables uh, you can mention that uh, injuries that's caused by equipment falling you can mention that as well, right? Equipment falling. Some other things that you can mention for two marks is that fire caused by overheating computers, fire caused by overloaded sockets, 
electrocution caused by spilling drinks on the computer, or you can mention electrocution caused by touching live wires. Okay, that's some of the points that guys can write down for two marks. Now the next question is an interesting question. It's again an advantages and disadvantages question. It's for six marks. So you're going to be splitting it into three points for the advantages and three points for the disadvantages. So the question states that a touchscreen is both an input device and an output device. Touchscreens are used on many devices. A tablet computer uses a touchscreen. Describe the advantages and disadvantages of using a touchscreen rather than a monitor and keyboard for a tablet computer. Since some of the advantages of using a touchscreen is that the footprints of the computer will be smaller. Okay, and you can mention that fewer peripherals are needed, so therefore it saves money. You can also mention that it makes the computer lighter. Some other points that you can include for the advantages is that it's easier to select icons, right, using a touchscreen. And then the other disadvantages that we have to mention here is that if the screen is damaged, then the device cannot be used to input data. Since this is a test screen, if one of it's cracked, yeah, the person cannot use the device properly to input data. Uh, keyboards and monitors can be e replaced more easily. So, yeah, that makes it more, um, in terms of cost, it's, it's a different story again. And you can also mention that screens can become dirty, so more easily, therefore, it just affects the reading of data. Okay, you know, just constantly have to clean that screen to read the data. Some other disadvantages, or you can mention that uh, in this case is that large fingers could miss key data, so therefore there could be more errors on data entry in this case. So that's some of the other disadvantages that you guys can consider. Now let's move on to the next question. Now, when creating an ICT solution, the legal, moral, ethical, and cultural implications have to be considered. Choose the most appropriate implication that matches the descriptions below. Ensuring that copyright laws have been followed. Now, this is a legal implication, the most appropriate implication. Not giving information about the ICT solution to another company. This is more of an ethical implication that should be considered here. Question 12. The manager of a car garage has asked a systems analyst to create a new database system for the checking of cars, making sure that they are safe to drive. And the checking of the cars is known as a service. Each car is a unique license plate. So remember that it has a unique license plate. The cars can either be powered by electric or petrol. Remember, electric or petrol. Cars are serviced every 10,000 kilometers. For example, 10,000 kilometers, 20,000 kilometers. So that means it's just increasing it's increasing by 10,000 kilometers. The minimum cost of the surface service is 1,500 rupees and the maximum is 5,000 rupees depending on the model of the car. Different models of the car are serviced. The date of the service is agreed. Complete the table filling in the field names and the most appropriate data types to create the database using the information given above. For any numerical numeric field, specify the type of the number. Okay, so vehicle license plate now this data type really depends there's sometimes letters and alphabets sorry there's sometimes alphabets and numbers there so you can mention that this is more of a text data type or alphanumeric data type now powered by what type of data type is this so it's powered by either electric or patrol so it's giving you two options to choose from so this is more of a boolean data type numeric integer so this numeric integer is the car service, right? The cars are serviced every 10,000 10, kilometers. So we can mention that this could be the service, service interval, okay? Cost of service. Now the cost of the service is 1,500 rupees. So since they have mentioned rupees, this is gonna become numeric since it's a numeric value. It's gonna become a numeric. However, it's gonna be written as currency. Okay, since it's rupees mentioned there. So it's numeric currency. Okay, now text. Different models of cars are serviced. So we can mention the word model there in the field name. So yeah, that's text. Date of service is agreed. Now date of serv service, date of service is agreed. That is data type of date. So this is for a total of six marks that you guys can mention here. Now let's move on to the next question. Now the next question is that a systems analyst is planning to create a relational database. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of creating a relational database. 
rather than a flat file database. Since the questions for six marks are going to split again for three marks for the advantages and three marks for the disadvantages, the advantages here is that it uses, it uses the data flexibility, it uses data integrity, it uses data consistency. And the other advantages that we can mention here is that the service details, they only need to be entered once into the database in terms of the relational database. And the mistakes are less likely to happen when we enter data if it already exists in a relational database, right? Then it uses, let's say, data redundancy. Okay, yeah, that's the correct term. It uses data redundancy in this case. You mentioned that data can be accessed using any key fields. So there's some of the other points that we can consider, such as, let, let's say, better security due to the user level access control and it caters for future requirements. So these are some of the advantages that we can write down of creating a relational database rather than a flat file database. Now, what's the disadvantages? Disadvantages here is that it requires training to set up, and it's harder to set up, in fact. It also requires a data administrator, so it in, in therefore increases cost, causing the relation database, relational database to be more complex. So the part where I said it requires a data administrator and therefore increases the cost, that could be another point that you can add up in terms of the disadvantages. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Now the next question is that for each of the fields shown, name and describe one validation check that can be used on the data. Your answers must be different in each case. Now since this is a vehicle license plate, you have to use a presence check. Okay, you can use either two different types of techniques. You can either use a presence check or a format check. So here we're just going to be moving on with presence check. Okay. Presence check, what is that? Presence check, the description here, it, it is to say that it's to make sure that it is it has been entered, or let's say it has been entered as its unique number, okay, in this case, as its unique. If you're supposed to go with validation check like format check, you just need to describe it as to fit in with the layout, okay, for two marks. Cost of service. Now the validation check here could be the type check. We can mention that to type check. And uh, the description could be only digits only, okay? Since this is a cost of service. And another point that you can consider is that range check. You can check between 1,500 and 5,000, okay? And uh, date of service. Now date of service is more of a format check that you're going to be using. These are some of the validation te techniques that you should be knowing. You can mention that to ensure to ensure that it is DDMMM slash YYYY. Now this is the format for one of the dates that you can mention date of service. There are different types of formats. This, is, this would be the preferred option in this case. DDMMM YYYY. The other points you can mention for date of service validation checks are range check. It's to ensure it, it is between certain dates. Or you can mention length check, maximum of, for example, 11 char characters. Now, this could really depend. It could be either 8 or 6 in this case. So this is something that you can mention for about two marks. Next question. A family has a number of different devices connected to the Internet. Identify three items of computer hardware that, be, that may need to be purchased in order to set up a computer network so that the devices can, be, can use the Internet. So you must have seen at your homes, you either have a router. Okay, you, First of all, we need to have network cards, right? That's the most important thing when you're setting up um, a computer network. You need to have network cards. Then you need to have a router and a switch okay you can either have a switch or you can mention a hub okay it really depends in this in this case for three marks so you can either write a switch or a hub now b urgen is a member of the family he uses the internet to carry out research and send work to his office describe three other ways he can make appropriate use of the internet so since he's carrying out research and he's sending work to his office the, some of the ways that he can be using the internet in an appropriate way could be email. You can mention that for one mark. Email. He could be using a voice over internet protocol. Or he can be using online chat. It could also work online chat. He can be using it for gaming in this case. Okay. Some of the other points I can write down here is that actually, if since it's mentioned appropriate, we're just going to remove that gaming part. Gaming part. 
and we're just going to be using let's say online conference that would be the most appropriate instead of gaming it's going to be writing online conference so that's that seems to be the appropriate use of the internet but some of the other points that you can mention here is that you can use instant messaging we oip that means it's voice over internet protocol you can mention streaming music video tv on demand you can mention gaming but since this is appropriate use of the internet it best is to write these appropriate points use of the cloud news groups and ftp you can either mention some of these points for three marks let's move on to the next question urgent uses the internet to carry out his carry out research for his work describe describe two drawbacks of urgent using the internet for research now since he's using the internet the information it can be unreliable okay since he's using the internet it really depends on whether the information is correct okay so he has to just cross validate that and the data may be out of date that's something to be considered when you're using online resources sometimes the data is accurate sometimes you just need to check it again so two points two marks information can be un unreliable data may be out of date some other points you can mention is that it's unregulated so anyone can post anything on on the internet it's more difficult to find out what you're looking for when you're using the internet as well there's a vast amount of information and information overloads could be some of the points you can write down that the information may be biased or inaccurate or it can be slower to find relevant information since you're moving through a vast amount of information in the internet. Okay, so those are some of the points you can consider. Let's move on to the next question. Next question is that Arjun can log directly into his office system from his home computer. The, the office system only requires users to enter their user ID and a password. Explain why this is not very secure. This is because user ID, user ID and passwords Right, user ID and passwords can sometimes be easily guessed. Okay, depending on the person on how they put their user ID and password, can sometimes be easily guessed. You can also mention that others, right? Others can see, others can see the details being typed in when you type your user ID and password. Others can see the details being typed in. Some other points you can mention is that passwords can be hacked with a key logging software. You can also mention passwords can be hacked by using by using random password generators. You can also mention that if the home computer saves the login information, then anyone can access that if they open up the home computer since it saved up the login information. If the user does not log out, the others can access that data. Oh yeah, by the way, whenever you're using information on someone else, on another laptop try to log out okay that would be the best option uh, if it's not your own based computer if it's your own computer it should be all right as long as the computer is with you you can just try to keep it safe that's it the other points uh, the next question states that I described two other ways the office system could identify the user securely now one way could be using a one use code or a token you can mention that you can use a one one use code or a token so since it's a four marks it's two points for each one you can mention that uh, Arjun enters a code into the system you can mention that Arjun he enters a code a specific code enters a code into the system all right he can also mention that Arjun logs. You can also mention that Arjun logs in, then software generates a one use code. This could be either be a code or a token, it really depends what your choice is. You can also mention that even if the hacker intercepts, right, code, it's no use as it can only be used once. So the token, or let's say if you're using a token, the token time is limited. The other way could be biometrics. That seems to be the most best way to do this is that biometrics, right? When you're using biometrics, let me just reload the system again. Using biometrics, right? Using biometric scanner to capture digital images, to capture digital images, digital image of fingerprint, right? A fingerprint, that could be one example, retina, iris or face. So each biometric, 
is unique, right? So if you're using biometrics concept, you can also mention that each biometric is unique. Okay, each biometric is unique. You can mention that. You can also mention that biometrics are nearly impossible to forge, okay? Uh, for the other part, if you're saying about the one use code, you can say that even if, right, even if hacker intercepts, you can mention this point actually, even if ha hacker intercepts code is no use as can only be used once, right? As can only be used once. So we're just adding some additional points for four marks just to solidify what we're trying to mention about the one use code and the biometrics. The other way could be using a card or a dongle now, if a user has a card or dongle which is inserted into the computer, the dongle or the card is read by that computer. So you can mention that the dongle slash the card data is unique. That could be some other additional two points I can be writing down for four marks. Okay, so these are the answers I can write down for a total of four marks. This seems to be the end of all the questions. If you guys have enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. And uh, yeah, do comment below on what your thoughts are about this video. And yeah, new videos and new content will be posted soon. And I think that's it. All right. Bye, guys.